Alrighty then. Okay. We're good to go. We are up here. I would like to welcome everyone for coming to Non-Native English Speakers in Open Source Communities, A True Story. This is presented by three HPE employees. We have Matsuyuki in the middle, uh, Dong on the right, and Samuel on the left. Yes. All HPE, over to you. Yep, so yep. this microphone is now on. Um, hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, or just hello in English. Um, this talks about how it is to be a non-native English speaker in open source communities where English is the official language. So there are some challenges in there and we are going to share our, perspe our perspectives. Our talk is named Non-Native English Speakers in Open Source Communities, A True Story. And just to start, we are going to give a brief introduction of um, ourselves and share a little bit of our backgrounds. Hi, so uh, my name is Masayuki, and uh, I'm working for, uh, so all of the members are working for uh, OpenStack things, and uh, I'm now OpenStack core reviewer of uh, OpenStack QA, uh, especially uh, uh, Tempest. Tempest is the uh, integration test uh, for uh, OpenStack clouds. And uh, now, uh, so I'm, working at uh, HPE, as we said, and uh, I'm uh, working at the Tokyo office, and uh, of course I'm uh, Japanese, so uh, I'm very excited. I, this is actually second time to uh, attend the uh, LCA, so, uh, but uh, this is first time to speak at the uh, LCA. I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dong Ma. Uh, I'm Chinese. Uh, currently, I'm living in Beijing, China. Uh, I work for the Holy Packer Enterprise as software engineer for about uh, nine years, and uh, mainly focus on the uh, open source and the free software development. Um, currently, I'm working on OpenStack as an active upstream contributor focus on the Jenkins and uh, um, QA uh, upstream contribution. Uh, I usually work for the Fossori project as a core contributor. Uh, it's a uh, lessons analysis tools. Um, I'm also the first time speak as the LCA. So, uh, thank you. So hello, I am Samuel, I'm a Brazilian. And I'm also involved in the OpenStack community. I am a core reviewer there, um, more specifically in Keystone, which is the identity service. And I also work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And in my current role, I am allowed to work fuel upstream, which means I am able to support the OpenStack community in any, in any way it needs. So it's also my first time in LCA and my first time talking. So I'm really glad to be here. I heard some folks telling me about LCA and saying it's the preferred conference. And I'm really loving LCA because of the human aspect of this conference. So what is this talk about? Through this talk, we are going to give you, um, share with you our experiences in the OpenStack community. So there are some challenges as being non-native English speakers there. And we are going to enumerate those challenges. And they are classified into two categories. There are cultural challenges and language-related challenges. And after that, we are going to be sharing with you how we did manage to overcome those challenges. And then just to finish, we'll give a few tips on how to help newcomers in your communities. Okay. So uh, we are Chinese and the Brazilian and the Japanese. So I think we will share our experiences and the feelings and the thinking as uh, non-native English speakers 
So um, the, we will share th these challenges, focusing on culture that is based on, based on our true story. So, and the uh, first from me is, uh, so Japanese pers perspective, and uh, Japanese actually not to say tend to avoid uh, yes or no clearly. So, which means uh, we tend to express our opinion our unclearly. So, we think, uh, I think it make us respect each other, but uh, it's uh, sometimes uh, it's very confusing in the uh, uh, international communication, uh, especially in the uh, uh, English native speakers. So, and uh, for another example is uh, we Japanese say zen uh, suru in Japanese, which means uh, uh, I'll do my best uh, in dictionary, in uh, English dictionary, but the uh, actual meaning is I'll do nothing, <laughs> actually, <laughs> in many cases. Yeah, sometimes I'll do my best, that is correct, but uh, in many cases I will do nothing, actually. So <laughs> Japanese actually understand the meaning, so it's not a big uh, issue uh, in uh, Japanese culture, but uh, in the international communications, it's very, uh, in, it's a very big issue. So we should try to improve the, our uh, behavior, and uh, we should try to express uh, our opinion clearly. So, and, uh, yeah, next thing is, uh, yeah, uh, trend tend to be perfect. So we are trying to tend to be uh, perfect and uh, try to avoid uh, mis uh, show uh, misunderstanding or mispronunciation or something. And it's very fear for us. And uh, we try to just focusing on uh, read and the right things, you know, try to avoid uh, uh, listening or speaking. You know, that is very bad for our English, English conversation, actually. So we try to uh, overcome about that, too. And uh, keep intonation. This is a uh, very um, Japanese, standard Japanese, normal Japanese, uh, and try to keep uh, intonation uh, the, for, for example, uh, yeah, Samuel says, uh, konnichiwa, but uh, we say konnichiwa, oh, very flat, <laughs> it's very different, and uh, most of the time we say uh, keep the intonation, but uh, it's very uh, different from the um, normal English conversation or normal English speaking, so, uh, so I maybe try to, I'm not sure this is enough for you, but uh, I try to uh, uh, try to put an accent uh, in a conversation or speaking like this. And uh, next is the size of, size of economy. So uh, Japan is a bit, has a very, very big uh, economy and uh, we don't actually. We don't need to uh, try to uh, negotiate or discuss with other international people uh, for a long time. So uh, we can uh, avoid uh, uh, learn the English not so much. So that is, I think, very bad situation for learning in English. Yeah, and. Uh, so that uh, focusing on reading and writing is that uh, uh, we, uh, as we say, as I said that, uh, so we are trying to focusing on reading and writing. That is very good for the just uh, scoring in the test in the school. Yeah, very handy and easy. But uh, it's it is not enough for English conversation skill. So we need to uh, more focusing on uh, listening and uh, speaking. 
skills in that school. Yeah, we are now trying to improve uh, that skills in the school. And the uh, next thing is uh, pronunciation and the grammar is very difficult from the English, between English and the Japanese. So one thing is that uh, L and the R words in, in words. So we Japanese uh, had to distinguish the uh, L and the R sounds in words. Uh, for example, uh, so light and the right is different sounds in English, but uh, we, uh, easy to say right and right, uh, it's, it's, it's almost the same. <laughs> it's very confusing for us and for you. So it's very uh, funny thing, but uh, it's real. So, <laughs> and the uh, next thing is, uh, uh, so subject, verb, object. This is a uh, basic, basic English sentence order, I think. But uh, in Japanese, uh, subject, object, verb is a normal uh, sentence order. So we, uh, I really sometimes confusing about that. So in uh, English, we say, uh, uh, I love you. But uh, in Japanese, watashi wa anata wa aishiteimasu. Watashi is I, anata is you, uh, aishiteimasu is love. So it's very confusing for us, actually. And the uh, last thing for me is uh, katakana. Katakana is uh, one of the uh, Japanese characters. Uh, Japanese has uh, mainly three uh, characters. One is kanji, and the second is uh, hiragana, and the third is katakana. So ka katakana is used for uh, imported words, like uh, uh, so network, or file, or comment. But you can read uh, uh, network and the file and comment with these katakana words, but uh, we say this uh, network file comment like this. So it's very different pronunciation, I think. It's similar but uh, different. So it's very confusing for us. And the uh, next thing is uh, Japanese made English. And so there are some words, uh, this is just examples and the uh, one is pasokon, aircon, and uh, autobuy. Uh, so this is uh, this means a personal computer and the air conditioner. And the autobuy is very different. This means a motorbike, actually. <laughs> but uh, we use this, and uh, we sometimes this is uh, English words, but uh, it's not English words very bad, uh, it's not correct English. So it, uh, we are very confusing like this. Okay, next is Don. Okay, uh, I will give a quick uh, introduce from the Chinese perspective. Uh, I think um, Chinese culture have some uh, similar with the Japanese. Uh, but that is a traditional culture called the Confucian culture. It's created by this man called Confucius. Um, I think uh, this culture is uh, created um, at the uh, Xia Shangzhou dynasties uh, about uh, 2,000 years from here, from now. Uh, so, uh, this culture is very um, influenced in our uh, thought and uh, our behavior. Um, one of the core uh, Confucian texts uh, in this culture is called the Doctrine of the Me. Uh, in Chinese, its uh, name is Zhong uh, Yong. Uh, one is the guideline is the uh, lenses. Um, in this culture influence us sometimes uh, we would like to uh, say yes, but uh, don't like to say no. Uh, if we want to say no, we didn't uh, directly to say it. We need to uh, say some something like 
there is some difficult, there is uh, another reason, um, but this may make some uh, confusion with others. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, also, uh, we also would like to listen, uh, but don't like to negotiate. Uh, we don't like to fight with others. Uh, also, uh, in Chinese, uh, there is also some issues uh, 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 in pronunciation and uh, the grammar um, to hard understand. Um, in Chinese, there is a, a, a name, pinyin, very similar like the uh, English. But uh, there is different meaning in that. So uh, our pronunciation will get some uh, Chinese style. So it's sometimes it's hard to understand. Uh, also, we have the, uh, I give a, a small example for the grammar. Uh, uh, in English, uh, we will, meet each other to say hi, hello, how are you? Uh, but uh, in Chinese, sometimes we also say, 你吃了吗? Uh, which that mean, do you eat? <laughs> so that, that's uh, different. So uh, there will be some misunderstanding here. Yeah. OK. So from my perspective, from the Brazilian perspective, I find that discussions are driven in a very similar way. There is not a um, big cultural gap, big cultural difference as there is for my colleagues. However, um, some folks sometimes just give very short or direct response, which may sound a little bit rude sometimes even if that's not what they want to, 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 to mean. And there, there are also some curiosities about Portuguese and English. For example, the E in English is exactly the same as I in Portuguese. So when I'm spelling some words, I get confused. And when someone is spelling a word to me and I'm trying to write that down, Sometimes I get confused as well. That happened to me this week. And for the grammar, the adjectives in Portuguese are put after the object, which is exactly the opposed than in English. Because in English we say, for example, the blue house, and that in Portuguese would be the house blue, which is just the opposite. Um, in addition, there are some phonemes that do not exist at all in Portuguese, like the TH sound. And some Brazilians try to um, replace that with the F sound, and that gets very wrong. For example, um, some people would try to say thing as thing, which is very different. And I think Brazilian people sometimes have a very bad English, and one of the causes is because um, regular schools in Brazil are doing a very poor job teaching English to kids. So we end up in the high school knowing just the basics. Maybe you can write, you can read, but you cannot communicate, like having conversations like this. Our next, next session is language challenges. So we have covered all the cultural challenges so far. And there are some challenges related to the language itself. And we are going to enumerate some challenges and by sessions. And the sessions are, um, we have four sections. One session for each skill language. So each language skill, sorry. And it is reading, writing, listening, and speaking. We start with reading. Okay, so I think uh, 
the reading is the, the easiest in most cases, but uh, it's very important because uh, most of the technical documents are written in English. So, and uh, most of the conversation in uh, open source communities, uh, of course, in English, uh, like uh, emails or IRC. Yeah. So reading skills is very important for us. But luckily, if you have, uh, uh, sorry, you have the opportunity to uh, uh, confirm with the dictionary or using a dictionary if you cannot get the meaning or something. So in a word, so we can use the very useful for tools like uh, Google Translator or something like uh, online tools. Well, of, of course, you can use the uh, uh, paper dictionary, so book dictionary. Uh, that is very lucky for us in uh, reading skills. And uh, but uh, sometimes IRC conversation goes very fast, and uh, it requires in a kind of a real time skills, conversation skills. So it's very hard for, uh, I think, uh, it's very hard for non-native speakers, I think. And uh, the other thing is long emails. So sometimes long emails are posted to a, a mailing list. And they are very long emails, but uh, the conclusion is sometimes unclear. So we need to uh, read uh, between the lines. <laughs> it's very hard to uh, uh, non-native speakers, actually. Yeah, Vincent. Um, I, I will uh, introduce some writing challenges we face in uh, non-English speaker. First one is the grammar. Uh, uh, as we say uh, before, uh, the structure of sentence uh, in Japanese, Chinese, uh, English is uh, very different. So uh, this is uh, one challenge we faced. Uh, another one is uh, uh, writing lo long and beautiful sentence is, is, is very difficult for, for us. Uh, uh, sometimes we can write very long sentence. Maybe y you cannot read, it, understand it. Uh, the ne next one is uh, uh, simple sentences are prevalent, but uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's difficult to see some detailed things. Uh, so uh, this one we should care about it. Uh, also, the uh, the speed is also we face very difficult in the RC and uh, uh, chatting. Um, sometimes, uh, if the discussion in RC is very fast, uh, I just type one sentence and this page is go go out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next one. So listening. Listening is a very interesting skill for me. Um, the first point there is variety of accents. So OpenStack is a globally distributed community. So we get people talking with a an American accent, British accent, Scottish accent, Australian accent. And sometimes it's hard even for you and it's even harder for us. <laughs> so yes, that's a pretty good challenge. There's also the speed. So um, when two people speak the same mother language, they used to um, speak quick. That happens in Portuguese, that happens in Japanese, and in Chinese, in any language. But that's not good for us because when people do speed up, in conversations, it's very hard to follow. And when we miss a part of the conversation, we 
maybe you are just afraid of saying something because I have not followed the whole conversation. There is also the vocabulary. Vocabulary is also very important for uh, every skill. But for listening, it's um, kind of a key because if you miss a word or you cannot understand a couple of words, maybe you cannot understand anything that's being said there. So that, that also comes to the same situation why, where you may just not be confident to participate. The grammar, grammar I think it's especially important for some languages where there is a different structure in sentences, like Masayuki said in Japanese. So his brain needs to translate that in real time somehow. And also just to make it easier, conversation always happen in noisy environments. So yeah. So the last uh, skill is uh, speaking. So speaking is, uh, I think, most difficult things in uh, for skill. So, but uh, I think mm, it's basically output skill. Output something skill is uh, difficult, more difficult than uh, uh, input something skill. Uh, especially it requires, uh, so speaking is requires uh, real-time skill, real-time conversation skill. So it's very difficult for us. And uh, so as I said before, so English words and uh, uh, pronunciation is very difficult and uh, very different from uh, Japanese and English, it's very different. So uh, it's very difficult for us too. And uh, so pronunciation and the speed and the fluency is uh, uh, so like this. <laughs> yeah. So slow and not fluent speaking is sometimes boring to uh, non-native uh, na speakers, I think. So this is uh, I think this is a uh, one of the issue for uh, non-native speakers in uh, speak. I think so. Like this, we have a lot of challenges. We said, and uh, uh, we are, but uh, we are overcoming uh, like these obstacles. Uh, not all, but uh, some of obstacles we are overcoming now. So we would like to share the tips or something if you you wanted to know about that. Vincent? Yes, uh, we have some tips uh, to overcome the obstacles. Um, first one is um, the culture uh, uh, difference uh, is harder uh, than the language challenges. Uh, I think the cultural difference need to be respected. Uh, uh, we, we just need to improve is the English skills. Uh, another one is uh, we should uh, be in contact with the language uh, as much as you can. Uh, and you don't. Uh, you you should uh, forget your limitations and. Uh, practice more and more, and uh, do your best, you will eventually improve. Um, for the for the vocabulary skills, I think it's more reading to uh, read more uh, things to improve the vocabulary. We have a couple of more tips here. So communicate daily. So someone who is really willing to improve, to brush up your skills in any language. I think um, language immersion, as he just said, is very important. So just create the habit to communicate daily. Maybe um, talking to a friend, or just writing, reading. That's very important. And there are 
a lot of useful tools out there. For example, for reading, you can get their vocabulary, vocabulary reading, and there are dictionaries you can use. There are um, translators and everything. So there are also some apps that help learning new languages, like Duolingo. And I think that I think it's very important to practice with yourself and with others. When I was first lear learning English and French, I did that a lot. I talked to myself, and people around me thought I was crazy, but that's very useful because one thing is you being able to form the sentences and your arguments in your head, and another thing is putting that out. And also having one-to-one -one conversations helps a lot because talking to another person, just a single person, is much easier than talking to a group and to an audience. So just pick up some friends and set up some um, hangouts like once a week, every two weeks, and that helps a lot. So our last session is about onboarding newcomers, and we are going to share a few actions that can be taken from both newcomers and some veterans in the community, people who does speak English as a native language, so that the process of onboarding newcomers is going to be easier. So hopefully you may use some of our um, experience in your community. So uh, for newcomers, yeah, for newcomers, but uh, I think this is useful for all newcomers, I mean, the not only uh, non-native speakers, but also uh, native speakers, like these uh, tips. So first one is uh, be friendly. So uh, be open your mind. So most of the people, uh, especially uh, open source communities people, uh, very open people should be have that. So, and, uh, so you can find a lot of friends in uh, open source communities, if you open your mind and uh, be friendly. And uh, if you open and uh, make a friends, uh, you can get uh, like a mentor or something, uh, friends. That is one of the uh, good exercise, English exercise to communicate with uh, uh, another, other native or na non-native speakers in English. And find a matter. And uh, so mentors uh, can uh, provide what gives you uh, some advice, uh, not only uh, technical things, or, but also uh, uh, communication skills. Uh, so it is very good for your uh, uh, communication skills. It's very important. And uh, share your opinions. So uh, if you don't, uh, say or speaking your opinion to the others. Uh, nobody don't know your opinions. So please share your opinion. That is a very good exercise for uh, English speaking, English conversations. And prepare in advance. So like these sessions, uh, we are now, uh, we are we were very uh, had a very much uh, practice. <laughs> I'm not sure this is very enough. So, but uh, <laughs> we had to do that. Did that. So, and, uh, so preparation is preferable. It's if you not do not prepare prepare the conversation, it mm, might be a bad conversation or communication in that situation that so ask questions is this is similar to uh, share your opinion but it may be uh, easier than that I think you don't need to um, make a very great special fantastic questions I think one example is uh, uh, like this uh, uh, so 
I don't understand the slide number two, so please uh, give me more details or please say, uh, say that again. Yeah, it's a very good question, I think, if you wanted to know that. Yeah, that's a very good example, I think. And the brush up your English skill is, yeah, I need more. <laughs> uh, so we need more uh, English skills. Yeah, we are. We should care about the culture, but uh, we should improve our English skills. That uh, these uh, uh, that makes the very good communication to each other. Yes, sir. Okay, and um, the last we have some. Uh, uh, tips for the native speakers. Uh, yeah, first one is uh, um, be be patient. Um, so uh, each of the non-English speakers may have the different level uh, of English skills. So sometimes you will be uh, feel frust fr frustration. Uh, on conversation with with them uh, uh, due to the pronunciation, uh, grammar issues. Um, so please be patient. Uh, the next tip is uh, to uh, please to speak slowly as you can, uh, is especially in the group discussions. Um, the very speed up discussions uh, might be uh, hard to understanding sometimes. Uh, the next one is to use the simple words and uh, the simple sentence. Um, uh, use the simple word and sentence uh, as you can. You can uh, or avoid some misunderstanding. Um, the fourth one is to encourage uh, communication. I think uh, this will make them very comfortable uh, to participate in the communication. Um, the last one is uh, don't do not make fun uh, of the non-native speaker. Uh, I think uh, this may be terrible for them. Uh, yeah, that's all the tips. Yeah. So before we go to Q and A, I do have questions for you. Um, how many of you are non-native English speakers here? Yes, I've got. Yep. Yeah, non-native. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few. <laughs> okay, and how many of you who are English speakers, like native speakers, have ever thought about this? Okay, that's great. Thank you. So, does anybody have questions? One, two, I have the cord, no, you have that one. I've got the cordless mic. Done. So I have to hold this near you. Okay. No, no, just, just there. Just talk. Just talk. That far? Okay. Talk. Um, xie xie. <laughs> arigato and obrigado. Um, that was fantastic. My question is, for us terrible monolingual Australians, <laughs> what what is the most what is the hardest thing, the most frustrating thing that you've experienced when having to deal with us terrible Australians <laughs> and other English speakers as well? Your list was really useful. I was like, yes, I must do that. Yes, I must do that. So be a little bit less culturally respectful and tell us what we need to do differently. So in open source communities, I don't think it is that hard because people do care a lot about the human aspect. So at least for me, it's, been, it's not been that hard in the open stack community because people are very helpful there. I have not been facing a case where people were like, Laughing at me, so at least for me, I don't know if. Yep. So for me, uh, yeah, 
we say about that uh, very in a discussion very fast <laughs> the conversation is very fast discussion is very fast so we cannot follow easily that so after that uh, so after the meeting or uh, discussions uh, I need to ask some friends in the <laughs> group and uh, the, I need to ask the conclusion of the <laughs> meeting or something. <laughs> That's a uh, very, yeah, one of the reason is the cause is uh, uh, my English skill is very low. So <laughs> I need to uh, improve our, my English skill, but uh, yeah, it's uh, very hard to overcome. <laughs> Donna, Donna just said that her, that's exactly right, Donna's saying that her English is much better than your Japanese, I'm standing in front of the microphone, sorry, uh, and that's, are we? yeah, and that's exactly right, I, I deal with open source just all the time and it's terrible, I can't put, put rubbish on them until my, my Japanese is better than his, his English, sorry, so just speak into, like, just talk. Okay, uh, it's not quite of a question, it's more of a comment because I'm really passionate about that. Uh, when I arrived at Australia four or five years ago, I used to hear, the worst thing that happened to me was that people were making fun of my accent. They were mimicking how it was sounding, things like that. And at the beginning, I did not realize how upset I was. I was just, you know, laughing because you don't really want to say anything. And then someone said exactly what you said. You know what? You don't, uh, I start saying, oh, you can't understand my English. We can switch to Portuguese. If your Portuguese is better than my English, we switch and it's all good. And, exactly right. and, and with ears, that, that they eventually go, you know, people stop saying that. But other thing that happens is that I think no, uh, native speakers do not realize the cognitive effort that we have to do to speak another language. So we are always kind of on the first two years, I was, I, I felt like I was so much dumber in English, like I couldn't make an argument. We've, we've running a bit short on time. So I've got, oh, is, any, any other questions? No. no, that's right. We've got one at the back up here. Over the back here, sorry. Sorry, I'll hold it. Uh, if it's okay, I actually have two questions. So based on some issues I've seen in teams I've worked in in the past. So sometimes we've had problems with people with English as a second language who have been overseas and through video conf having trouble um, having input into discussions. So how could I go about bringing them into it and helping them have their say? So how, how, can, how can we encourage people to join? Uh, Non-native speakers is what she's mm -hmm. saying. So. The question is how to encourage others to participate in discussions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think if you are having discussions like about a given subject, you can just ask for our participation like, um, Vincent, what do you think about this? Or just, well, ask and try to include us in the discussion and that's going to be very helpful because maybe Vincent's just thinking about something that can be very valuable to the discussion, but he's not feeling comfortable to, to talk. Okay, second question. Cool, and I've also seen in some cases people coming from unassertive cultures where there were problems with people from more assertive cultures really taking advantage of that, and how could I try and prevent that from happening? So how can we stop assertive cultures like Australian? Yes. Australians, That's we're exactly incredibly assertive. <laughs> yes. We, so how can how can we tone ourselves down? I think is a yeah. You know, that's a good, very good. And how can I get other Australians to tone themselves well, down and not take you advantage? Can't. We're <laughs> how can I try and maybe help a little bit so they don't I, walk all over? Do you, do you guys have any suggestions? Uh, uh, I, I have one. I'm on tips is uh, for the uh, encourage is. Uh, actually, for 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 for, for me, uh, for some discussions, uh, I would like to join, to to, to participate. But sometimes, uh, if the di discussion is very fast, uh, I just want to say that most next uh, next part. So this is a very difficult thing for for participate. So I think we have. Uh, the scenes to draw. Uh, 
but they have some uh, challenges. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, did I? Myself, I did. I'm sorry, we're out of time. I'm sorry. Um, however, I am personally very passionate about this, um, so I'm sure we'll be happy to have a hallway about this if you see me or any of these guys. I'm sure we'll love to have a chat to you about it. Um, that's it. Thank you for giving them a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you very much.